Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Planet Zoo modding tutorial. As always, my name is Leaf, and it's so great to have you guys here. So this is going to be a little bit more of a semi-advanced one. This is once you already get the hand of coding. This is already once you get the hand of modeling. I'm just trying to help you guys get the best damn thumbnails possible. So yes, this is the UI tutorial. And without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it with the icons themselves. So of course, when you're making Planet Zoo mods, you want to display them the best way possible. And I thank Johnny V for allowing me to code his Megatherium, otherwise known as the Giant Ground Sloth, for purposes of this tutorial. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it. So one of the things that I use is Ansel. And that happens when you actually have a GeForce driver. So if you go to GeForce Experience, if you do own a GeForce driver, you'll see a bunch of this stuff pop up. And if Planet Zoo is on here, you'll know it works on there. So there's a lot of different ways that you could use this. You can use this for taking pictures, but most importantly, you can use this for green screens. Now, of course, there's a little bit more of a lower budget way. You can always use art shapes to kind of make green screens in game and just plop it right behind the animal. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to be using my little Ansel one. You know, it's nice, prim and proper. But without further ado, we're just going to start getting some transparent channels over here. So, of course, I use GIMP. It's free to use, and I really do suggest you guys do that. And what I'm doing right here, I'm going to Layer, Transparency, Color to Alpha, and please make sure to use Select by Color tool and make sure you only select the green. Uh, if your animal is green for some reason, it may select more of that, but you could always just add into the selection or at least take out of the selection any parts of the animal that may linger over. So of course over here, we are going to go back to layer, transparency, color to alpha, use the color picker tool just to select that exact shade of green. And you can also change the color of the green screen as well if you are working with a green animal, but you know, we don't really get too many green animals. So I think you guys should be good with that, but you simply hit okay. And then there you go. You have your transparent animal. I realize that over here, it may seem like it's a little bit jagged, but that all comes out in the wash, especially when you zoom out like this, it may look a little bit more green, but do not worry about that. Now, once we get that done, we can go over to our adult models um, and then do control F. And then once you select that area alone, it'll just repeat the last thing that you did. And what I like to do here, I just like to overwrite the PNGs. That way everything stays safe and everything stays overwritten. Now moving on from there, this is where the fun begins. So this is probably the most important part that I see a lot of people tend to mess up. It's copying over the transparent animal and doing this over here, making the actual thumbnails themselves. So what I like to do, I like to paste it in here, control F, whoops, uh, shift F, which leads you to the flip tool. If it is flip the other way and then control S to scale. Okay. And then you just simply scale it in here and then you just make it fit in this little box. You just try and line up the face as well as possible. And then you go into Eclipse Select, very important to not have feather edges selected so you get crisp lines. And then you try your best to lend it in from the very top corner all the way over here. And there you go. That is how you get a nice crisp thumbnail. So of course you can just overwrite that over there. Make sure to overwrite it as a PNG because otherwise it'll come out as a solid picture if you do a JPEG. And then you can do the same thing over here with the adults. Now, let's just say you want to do something a little bit more funky with the thumbnail. Let's say you want it to be poking out a little bit. Well, good thing I have you guys covered. So you do the same process over here and you may notice that the nose gets cut off. You simply just hold the shift and then you select that part of the actual Megatherium itself, or in your case, whatever animal you're actually making. And then you can overwrite that and then you are all good. Make sure to remember what actual um, one that you use over here because I often find myself kind of messing that up and using the same one over and over again. But, oh well, it's something that happens. And then you can do the same thing over here, just making sure to keep it all lined up to the corners, making sure it all lines up perfectly. 
and overwriting that right there. And then what comes next is of course the actual Zoopedia image, the research image, as well as whatever this is. I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> but of course, one of the most important things to do is get a good looking picture. For example, I have little photo shoots with my animals and you guys can kind of see them right over here. I just kind of go throughout, I play with them a little bit, I set up these nice little scenes, and I choose which one looks the best. Hey, that's a sugar pine episode right over there, check that out. But anyways, what I chose to be the best one was this one over here, and of course, you guys can still do some fun stuff with that. If you guys do want to edit it a little bit more, feel free to. I edit like all my pictures anyways with Ansel, but if you guys want to add a little bit more color to it, feel free to do it right there. For example, I want it a little bit more saturated. And then here comes the fun part, actually getting it to fit in these little boxes themselves. So in order to get the best image possible, I usually like to crop it pretty much to there and maybe a little bit bigger than that because I like to have a little bit room on like each side and whatnot. And there we go. And maybe if you want to be oriented the other way, you could flip that the same way that I taught you guys. But what comes most important is kind of making it line up perfectly with the little black bar for specifically the Zoopedia over here. So you may notice that there's this beautiful black bar over there. And what I just did, I hid the layer. So there's this beautiful little eye over here. And then you can just click that and it disappears temporarily. You're still working on this layer over here. So whatever I do over here, let's just say I do that and then I delete that. It'll come up right there. But of course, I'm not going to do that. Oh, whoops. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to do that. What I want to do, though, is select over here and make sure I get that right up to the pixel. And then I just, whoops. Yeah, I get that right up to the pixel. And then I take this box and I drag it all the way down. And that way, I select all that black area right there. And then I hit delete. And then what happens after that, you'll be shocked. It perfectly creates that beautiful black line and then we can simply overwrite that and then we are all good with that one and then we essentially do the same thing over here it's a little bit more complicated because these ones are transparent but you know what with a little bit of time and practice you guys will get it perfect so of course what I like to do I like to just scale it first and then I do that and honestly if it comes off a little bit like that it's totally fine it's not even noticeable in the game so you can absolutely just overwrite that the way it is and i usually like to just click right there and then overwrite it again just to really make sure that i get that perfect and then i do the same thing over here and you know what scale n and then we just line that up right there and then we get these beautiful beautiful ui pictures and like that i believe we are done with our little tutorial so of course as you guys probably know i'm not changing this because the megatherium was actually found in that range so it's pretty fine uh going back over here we have our files so you just match them up over here animal species we can bring that all the way over here save over that animal header that's the one right there and we save over that bada bing Bada boom, boys. All right, and then we take this one. Zoopedia, as always, my favorite one to work with. And then thumbnails, and we just do that. And there we go, guys. I really do hope this tutorial helped. It was really fun just to, like, kind of make this with you guys. Of course, I really do hope this really does go to show, like, how simple it can be to get some really very good, interesting UI, especially with messing with the borders, kind of like this one. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next tutorial. Have a great one, and enjoy the rest of your days. Bye-bye now.